Hey everyone, and welcome to another Yogi Misfit Sessions. My name is Danny Pomploon, and I'm your host. Welcome to session 47. Oh my God, we're getting up to 50. So close. I can't believe I'm still doing this thing. <laughs> anyway, on session 47, I've got my buddy Stuart on the show. Uh, Stuart's a really, really awesome dude. Great teacher. He uh, just recently did some traveling. It's just one of his passions. Um, down in Mexico and he's teaching people how to teach um, in Spanish and then teaching English as well and really cool dude but we uh, we really start to dive into yoga and mental health I really appreciated that he brought up this conversation uh, because those of you that do know my story I've had a really really big uh, battle with depression and anxiety a few times around in life it really never goes away you kind of manage it Um, But we really, you know, it was really cool to to dive into these topics because I feel like they can be pushed away and kind of shoved under the rug. So I'm really excited that we uh, we got into it. As always, I would love to thank our friends over at SF Yoga Mag for supporting the show. And a quick heads up, March of 2019, I have a retreat going out to Bali. We're about to eat, pray, love it. <laughs> um, there are some spots left. Uh, uh, the retreat is almost full. We got, I think, about like six spots left. Uh, but you can check out the information on my website. Feel free to email me if you have any questions. Without further ado, enjoy today's episode. Stuart, my friend, welcome to the show. How's it going? It's going great, Danny. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to have a chance to talk with you. I'm really excited to get a chance to talk to you, mainly because we've been trying to talk to each other for a long time and it hasn't yeah. happened. Yeah, totally. But yeah. now now it's all happening. Everything everything is happening right now. Everything. Right now. Yeah. All right, right now. All of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, hey, I have a couple questions to ask you. Tell me about this teaching. Tell me about this teaching yoga thing in Spanish that you were doing. At like, okay. so we kind of start for people that are listening. Stuart and I have been trying to talk for a little bit on the podcast, and what he's doing is, you're, if I'm right, you're teaching people how to teach yoga, but in Espanol. Uh-huh. So basically, I was um, I love to travel. I've like lived in a bunch of different countries all over my life, and I've I've most of the big thing that I've. Uh, done is basically move to countries so that I can learn the language. Uh, so I speak Thai, Spanish, Portuguese, and I'm learning French. Um, and no, but no big deal, everybody. No big deal. <laughs> and, uh, that, was, that was like, th- that was the humble brag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's hard for me to tell when I'm humble bragging and that, but, uh, and, and so, uh, so I was, I, I want, I moved to Mexico in January and I really love yoga as well. And so I wanted to learn how to teach yoga in Spanish. Um, and, Basically, uh, I've found out that there's three different languages that when you're teaching yoga, you're using three different languages. You're using the language that we communicate every day, hand, feet, kind of basic anatomy. And then there's the medical mm-hmm. terminology about how to move the body, thoracic spine, uh, lumbar spine, all these different things. And then there's an added layer, which is Sanskrit translated into the local language. Right. So for example, in Spanish, uh, upper dog is pero baja, para abajo uh, or pero para arriba. And, yeah. uh, and so, uh, and so I, I, I went down there and I was like, at the end, I realized, oh, I could actually, um, teach Mexican yoga teachers how to teach yoga in English. Um, because a huge thing about, uh, in the rest of the world, a lot of people are interested in learning, uh, English. And I thought it's a great way to combine my love of languages with sharing yoga with people. Nice. Yeah. How, uh, I like how, how, I guess, are you doing like a certain, is it a teacher training thing? Or you're just going down there and being like, Hey, this is a, here's a two different classes. Yeah. So I'm still, I'm still figuring it out. Um, I, but I, I think I want to start with workshops, just kind of like three hour workshops, see what the interest is, uh, see if people are interested in, in, in kind of what the demand for it is. Uh, and then eventually I want to get into doing teacher trainings and, and other things and maybe bring people from Latin America to San Francisco to do teacher trainings and kind of connect them with the yoga community here. I have this student um, at, at here in San Francisco and she uh, she's she's super into Japanese. She's actually like she's learned the language and she's she's loves the culture. And we were actually talking about this, I think, last Sunday. But she was like, Danny, would you think there'd be any useful purpose for like a book that had uh, like, a, I guess, a thesaurus in different languages for yoga teachers? So like, you know, the word so as in like, you know, wow. in, in Spanish, in English, wow. in French and whatever, whatever. And like. 
that words like extend your spine, like those kind of like simple phrases that we use yep. in yoga kind of deal. And I was like, yeah, that would be super freaking awesome. And they're the hardest to find. So that's the, that's the thing that was, that I really did have to go to Mexico in order to learn this language. And, and there's, there's two interesting things that that brings up. So the first is that when you're speaking, when you're talking about yoga in another language, um, mm. we have words for the body part, body parts that other languages don't ha- know how to express. So like the ball of our foot, uh, you can't say that in Spanish. You can only say punta del pie. Um, yeah. And that means the point of the foot. So that means like the toes and how they point, not the actual like metatarsal line where the actual thing is. So I think that's a great idea. Um, I lost what the, I forgot what the other thing was. We should st- <laughs> we should steal our idea and make it ours. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Slap our name on it, make some money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right on. Well, I definitely wanted to catch up on that because I know like that's what you've been up to in the last, you know, that's what you were gone for a little bit. But yeah. let's let's uh let's start diving in a little bit deeper into the conversation. So we want to get into the nitty gritty today mm-hmm. about uh, mental health and and yoga mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and I know you have some. Yeah, I'll just let you take it away. I know you have some things to talk about and 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 your experience with it. So let, let's mm, let's get in it for sure. Yeah, so uh, I I've, I have a lot of kind of childhood trauma and issues um, and and stuff like that. And I came to yoga about twelve years ago, and I was like, okay, this is just a physical practice. I'm just going to take a little little like walk into this world. You know, all this esoteric kind of woo stuff like that yeah. all scares, scares the shit out of me. I'm not going to uh, <laughs> look so. deep into myself. No, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Right on Chat, however i can learn any handstand you want me to <laughs> <laughs> yeah and uh and so you know it was it was um about 12 years ago i started doing yoga and then i would start to have kind of pretty intense emotional releases uh and i and you know i just started to take a look at my life and 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 see some things that weren't going the way that you know they might have gone or not I, you know I, I don't know really what to say but and and so I was on I was on medicine for uh, um, ADD and ADHD, uh, mm-hmm. and I was taking Ritalin, Concerta, and stuff like that. And th- that was basically the only way that I could concentrate enough to do the things that I thought I had to be doing. For example, school. University. How old were you when, when you first started? Uh, like I guess treatment. Yeah, it was about sixteen years old when I first started getting on uh, various different medications. None of them really worked until I found Concerta, um, and right. that's okay. interesting because that's it's it's basically attention promotion through chemicals. Um, and I learned a lot from these these medicines. I don't I think there's a there's a time and place for treatment. The thing that I've learned is that it needs to be uh, a temporary with set like beginning and an end, as opposed to this open ended kind of thing that most people are finding themselves in. Um, right. But, and then, and so when I first started meditating, that was when I started to, it was almost like Ritalin taught me how to meditate, how to concentrate on the current moment. But then at a certain point I needed, uh, I got the kind of download that, you know, maybe I should uh, take a step back and and try to get myself off of these so that I can uh, concentrate more, more um, naturally. And, uh, and yeah, sure. Yeah. And so that's when I started doing meditation retreats um, and I was able to uh, kind of, uh, help myself learn how to concentrate more, um, effectively. I think certain people, you know, like I know there's, there's an argument like, you know, meditation over medication or whatever. And I think certain people Mm -hmm. actually different strokes, different folks, you know, I think some people treatment is actually really good for them. I think some, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, medical needs and stuff like that, like it's really good. And I also think that some people meditation is also good. And sometimes I think that for some people you can also blend the two together and, you know, still get the result. But I always just like to remind everyone, like, look, you got to do what's best for you and also make sure that you're smart about it and that you're actually checking in to someone that's trained on it. Now, meditation can do really cool things and yoga can do really cool things, but Mm -hmm. it's best to have all the information out in front of you. Yeah. And particularly when you're dealing with cases of trauma, um, childhood trauma, uh, because meditation can totally re-traumatize as well. Um, particularly done with, with it, it's really important in cases of trauma to find somebody who has gone through trauma and, and can guide you through that meditation process. Cause, uh, it can definitely lead you into places that, um, are dangerous, not dangerous, but you know, like maybe not the best for you at the time. Sure. How did you like, what have you seen like, as far, like, I guess in your own practice and in your own self, like since you started using different types of tools and techniques to deal with mental health, um, you know, specifically using yoga, like what was it like beforehand and what is it like now? And what was that transition like? I guess that's a big loaded question. <laughs> All of it. Yeah. 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 So basically it, before it, the voice inside of my head was violent. 
um, and uh, self-violence. So I, I didn't really express this violence outwards too much. It was more on myself. And um, and so now it's become way less violent. And every time that I hear that voice saying, okay, you should do this, you need to do this. I'm like, oh, do I really need to do this? It's like giving right. me a kind of a skepticism over my own internal voices that, that um, and this kind of, yeah, uh, yeah, that's, that's basically, yeah. Mm-hmm. What's it like now? Now it's gentle, calm. There's still periods of intense uh, kind of violence and I get stuck in this kind of like, I, I, I'm, I'm, I deal with some depression and stuff like that. And so there, it's in these moments of depression, uh, it's um, the trick is to try to find a way not to get lost in the depression and to remember, okay, this is based on things that I have con- been conditioned um, for like childhood issues and stuff like that. It's my conditioning. And, Mm -hmm. but right now I'm safe right now. There is nothing uh, in my field of harm or anything like that. And it's just basically remembering that I don't need to get lost in it anymore. Um, And there are periods where I do get lost in it. And I think it's karmic in nature, but um, yeah. When you found the practice or I I guess, well, you kind of said that like when, when you first started, it was like all about physical stuff for you and you didn't really get into the other esoteric stuff because it was really scary. Same boat, by the way, Mm -hmm. I like, all right, I got a confession to make on my podcast. <laughs> you guys, this is so bad. I bought a harmonium. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Everyone, everyone pause, pull it together. There it is. We're going to get through this, but I bought a harmonium. <laughs> That's funny. And the truth is, is because, you know, like, when I first started, I, I, you know, when I first started practicing, it was all, it was all just physical. I mean, I started as an Ashtangi, oh. you know, and so like everything was just like, oh, I just got to get my body into these shapes and get my body into these shapes and get my body into these shapes. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it wasn't until later on down the line, actually, and, until I, I really started getting into yoga that I was like, what's this Gaia Tree Mantra thing? Oh. And what's this like, you know, big meditation practice of it? And then when I went through like, you know, my own addiction issues and whatnot is when really when meditation really started making a big play. And then I think that for me, really opened up um that like multiple uh you know like you step into yoga and it's like kind of like a big room with a bunch of doors yeah. and then that for me like really gave me mm. the the power or maybe the the inquiry to want to open up way more of the doors mm. when did that happen for you like when did yeah. you feel like okay i'm here i'm in it i'm gonna like was there like a certain moment or was there any yeah. like do you re- like i remember i'll never forget mm. when like i was like I want to start chanting and I bought a harmonium. <laughs> <laughs> so it just recent, it's just a recent thing for you then. Uh, it actually was like, it was, a, it, was not, it was a couple of years ago. Okay. I took Janet Stone's, I took Janet Stone's class. I love her. She's, she's super awesome. Yeah. I, I get to see her weekly, which is like, it, it's such a treat, but like, I remember being in her class and um, yeah, for I me. was anti everyone anti chanting. And finally I was like, Oh my God, she cracked me open. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just recently took one of her trainings and had a similar type of thing. Um, nice. Uh, yeah, for me, that moment was uh, 2014. I had I had started a company and uh, I was trying to raise money. It wasn't going well. Uh, I brought somebody into the company who had, who had um, caused a lot of challenges. Turned out he wasn't who he said he was. And just kind of chaos was surrounding my life. And I was like, oh, okay, here it is. Here's, you know, and I had been meditating for maybe three or four years before this. And then all of a sudden it was just like, whoa, okay. Something's not right, uh, and so I went to Mount Madonna. Um, have you have you heard of Mount Madonna in the Santa Cruz Mountains? No, I don't even think I know. It's what a it beautiful is. retreat center um, in the Santa Cruz Mountains. It's half intentional community, half um, half business, and so they you can book a re- retreat. Retreat you can bring people there on a retreat, and they have everything set up, food, and there's like half the people there are living there full time, uh, totally dedicated to yoga practice. Uh, wow. Okay. Amazing, amazing place. And so you can do personal retreats there. And so I was like, okay, I'm going on a personal retreat. I got to figure out what's going on. I had done a 10 day, Mm -hmm. I had done a 10 day meditation retreat before. Um, and, uh, and so then I, 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 I went there and, um, you know, I had this really, really powerful meditation experience where I don't know if you've, um, encountered it before, but I encountered what some people refer to as the abyss. Um, uh, it's just this place, space of emptiness, uh, and, uh, some people find it very joyful. And then I like, I was like, Whoa, got to step back from there. And it caused a lot of fear. Uh, and then from that point on, I was basically, I gone, I went all over the world, uh, doing 10 day meditation retreats, um, in different places. 
And so the, the thing that you said, which is most interesting, which is that it opens up, there's a lot of different avenues and doors. Um, and that's totally true. But then the issue you get into with trauma um, is that uh, uh, some of those doors might not be the best for you to open at that moment. Um, right. Um, and so I started opening a bunch of doors and, and, uh, and, and now I've kind of come back to a place where it's like, okay, that can wait. Like I don't need to open that door yet. Um, and, but when it's right, I'll, I'll do it. How do you balance, uh, I guess, and you know, when to do that? And also uh, one, how do you balance mm -hmm. when, when and when not to do that? But two, like, are you also, do you do other modalities of healing in addition to yoga for mental health? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, yoga is a, a, a big thing that, that has a whole, whole bunch of things that could be con considered yoga. Um, and then a whole bunch that's been kind of mixed into new age science. So I have a difficulty. I've, I've tried to research this quite a bit. I have a dis difficulty pinpointing exactly what is yoga, what is authentic yoga, what comes from the traditions that were practiced thousand years ago, and then what is um, a new edition uh, based on new age kind of philosophy. And there's nothing wrong with new age philosophy. Uh, um, so I don't, I, I, can you actually repeat the question? Yeah. So uh, like, you know, like what, what type of, in addition to your yoga practice, are you using any other like mm -hmm. modalities to kind of, you know, help, help mm -hmm. treat, you know, ongoing, mm -hmm. you know, mental problems? Or yeah, so I recently, health, not problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I recently got back into uh, into therapy with uh, a yogi, which has been a huge, um, uh, interesting because I had, I had rejected therapy for a long time because it didn't it didn't encompass this aspect of body awareness embodiment um, that yoga does in, in a, a beautiful way. And so I, I had rejected therapy for a long time, and it just mostly recently come back to it. And I think it's really important. Um, uh, after reading Peter Levine's book, Awakening the the, the Tiger, um, about trauma, uh, it's re really important to work with a guide when you're working through trauma in, in psychotherapy. And then other mod modalities, massage has been a huge, huge um, player in my, in my in my healing uh, uh, path. Um, so body work and that connection between another person and just receiving the work and being that receiver. And now I've started to get in body work on my own. Um, Go for it. I was gonna say, what do you say to someone that's out there that you know is is maybe skeptical about um, you know using yoga as um, you know as 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 something to help with their mental health? Like what you know if they're on the fence? Hmm, it's a good question. Um, yeah, I'm not not sure I have a good answer for that. Essentially, just whatever you try, let the results um, define what you do. Um, not opinions about anything like that but just really try it out for yourself and if it doesn't work don't do it but if it works follow it yeah i love that yeah i i i i feel it you know i've gone through uh depression myself and 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 and, and for me personally like I'm, I'm, I'm an open book but like i i, I love therapy i have therapy mm -hmm. once a week i look mm -hmm. forward to it like even when things aren't wrong it's just a great way for me to check in for me to just check in you know mm -hmm. and, and even if it's just like a shorter session where it's like okay everything's fine today or, or whatever like it's just a great way to to keep myself honest and also to keep myself in integrity but mm -hmm. i like you said we get caught up in our own self and it's nice to have that third party to like be like hey did you did you think about this or did you look at it this way or mm -hmm. ask you the right questions to get to to your answers you know mm-hmm mm -hmm. I love it, man. I love it. I'm I'm so stoked that I got to uh, pick your brain a little bit today and 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 just have you on the show. I know we've been trying to connect for for a little bit, and yeah. and now we fi now we finally did it. We did it. Now we're done. Yeah. <laughs> and we're talking about some really cool stuff yeah. because you know what? The truth is, people don't want to talk about mental health a lot. Yeah. And then you add, you know, you add mm -hmm. yoga to some people could be like you know, it's supposed to be like a happy place where you can just you're supposed to just look and feel mm -hmm. a certain way and and. It's intimidating, but to actually have that that dialogue and that conversation within that context is mm -hmm. also super important as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just uh, I, I just interviewed someone myself, Keith Raboy, and he he it was the most interesting interview I did because essentially I found out that stress, what we are taught about stress, um, is most of the evidence doesn't actually support that, which is essentially stress is a is a pathology or a disease, and that we should avoid it at all costs. Uh, stress mm -hmm. is actually something that can be a really good motivator that if you tap into a sympathetic nervous system response, this kind of fight or flight, uh, sensation, if you view whatever is, uh, challenging you as a challenge, as opposed to a threat, uh, it can, uh, use as a motivator. And so like this idea that yoga should all be about relaxation and all this different stuff, relaxation is really important. Uh, but we also just have this gift of the sympathetic nervous system response that can help us into action. 
Huh. It's, wh- where did you get that from? Uh, so uh, the the book is called The Upside of Stress by Kelly McGonnell. Um, okay. And uh, a lot of evidence supporting basically the, the, this idea that stress is something that um, is, is, is inevitable in life. And so if you change your frame of mind about stress from a threat to a challenge, um, it will start to uh, engage your sympathetic nervous system in a different way. If you're threatened, you'll cower over and kind of like look for things to harm you. But if you view it as a, as a challenge, it will, uh, it engages the, I forgot the word, but I think it's the challenge response, uh, in your, of, of your sympathetic nervous system. Wow. Okay. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to look that one up for myself, man. <laughs> Everyone can use a new response to stress.